In 20 minutes, learn to motivate students to communicate through art. Promote proficiency through discussions of paintings. Today I'm going to talk about how to teach language using art, specifically paintings, as a tool for communication. Across the academic disciplines, art is used to invite students to observe, ask questions, and seek personal connections, and, and world language teachers can effectively borrow the routines other disciplines employ to do the same. Allow me to show you how to promote proficiency in a world language classroom through discussions of art. One image can be rich and multi-layered. Visual images provoke emotions and get us thinking. The way I use art is as inspiration for conversations. The method uses students' thinking skills in response to art to motivate them to listen to and use the target language. My students aren't learning art history, making art, nor learning about art. They are enticed to think about art and use their reactions to the art to get them to speak. I'm going to show you this method using fewer than 20 works of art that repeat in the different activities. In your own lessons, you may choose to use the same set of images, or you can use the activities I am modeling with a different set of images. You can, your set can be from different cultures like mine is, or from artists that are all from your target culture. The activities I will demonstrate can be employed during a unit on art, or they can be used in thematic units that share some of the same vocabulary. For example, picture an activity that uses Van Gogh's bedroom in Arles for a unit on houses, or Carmen Lomas Garces para Barbacoa para Cumpleaños for a unit on celebrations. The subject matter of the painting could include some of the vocabulary in thematic units. While these activities I um, will present lend themselves to both of those methods. The way I employ these ideas is yet a third unique way. When I teach a unit on art, I center it around the skill of talking about art and simply call it how to talk about art. I wrote this unit to show you have to move your students from to show you how to move your students from novice to intermediate low. Let's take a look together at the two levels. Here is the novice high interpersonal performance indicator from Actable. I can express, ask about, and react to preferences, feelings, or opinions about art, using simple sentences most of the time, and asking questions to keep the conversation on topic. That is where your students are at the beginning of the unit for the theme of talking about art. My students in previous years of study were asked to express their emotions when looking at art. Maybe your students expressed, asked about, and reacted to preferences, feelings, or opinions about another topic that wasn't art. Once they can do this skill consistently across themes, they are ready to level up to the next proficiency level. So let's consider the intermediate low interpersonal performance indicator. I can express, ask about, and react with some details to preferences, feelings, or opinions on familiar topics by creating simple sentences and asking appropriate follow-up questions. Students will level up to intermediate low when they are able to speak with some details on the theme of talking about art. It is my intention the other C that you are addressing in this unit is connections, making connections. Learners build, reinforce, and expand their knowledge of other disciplines while using the language to develop critical thinking and to solve problems creatively. Students will be learning about visual thinking strategies, talking in the target language. I would recommend that you work with your visual arts specialist to see what the students have already done, or at the very least, let the visual arts specialist know that you will be making connections with art. To scaffold this unit, I first determined what language chunks students would need in order to be able to talk about art for the end of the unit assessment. Then I looked at the intended activities they would do along the way and made sure that these activities use the same vocabulary. With all of these considerations in mind, I was able to write a vocabulary list to preview the vocabulary for the unit. To make it manageable, I put into sections by task. This is the brainstormed list of vocabulary in English. A copy of it is in the shared resources that I will link to at the end of the presentation so that you can rely on it to make your own vocabulary list in the language that you teach. Many teachers teach without giving the students a vocabulary list. Students are responsible for being able to complete the task, not for specific words. I keep a list for myself to make sure that I introduce and repeat the needed structures for, the can for my can-dos. When I want the students to have a vocabulary list, I have them generate a personalized list unique to that class. In this presentation, I will offer six activities for talking about art. Teacher talk, 
modeling talking about art, gallery walk, describing works of art in a word, marker game, interpretive activity on what is depicted in painting, see, think, wonder, stand up for your choice, analyzing images using art terms, presentational writing assessment, a review of a work of art. I built these activities in a particular order, including other solid practices for language learning, like modeling, movement, pair and group work, and thinking routines. It is not my intention that you run a unit in the same way that I do. Instead, I'm trying to model the six activities so that you can rewrite them to suit your style and make them into your own unit. Most teachers include art in their instruction, and I am sure you will leverage the best way to bring art into your teaching. In the first activity, called Teacher Talk, I show students my interest in art and how to talk about art as I briefly describe four paintings. Like most of my units, this unit starts out with a teacher talk that gives students input on the theme at hand. I use the words they will later use themselves in the activities I have planned for the unit. In a minute, I will show you how I use teacher talk in talking about paintings, but the way that I preview the vocabulary for doing that is to start with just one word. This is a technique that I use in every unit, and I'm happy to be able to share it with you in this presentation so that you can further develop your own method for introducing vocabulary. For this example, I am later going to talk about a painting that is one big mouth. So I start with the word mouth. When I first show the word, I make a gesture or act it out. With mouth, it is easy. I just point to my mouth. Then I ask the students to touch their heads, touch their shoulders, and touch their mouths, getting them to actively show me they understand the meaning. Next, I show a drawing. If I wasn't using slides, I could have written the word on the board in the last step, and now I could draw it myself. Some teachers translate this point, but I only use English if it is really necessary. I then use circumlocution with the word to give it more context. I talk about what you do with your mouth and where it is on your body. So now I model talking about art as I said I would. I thought it would be helpful for students to see the new vocabulary as I said it, so I wrote out the highlights of what I was going to say about each painting so that the students could have that visual support. It is my intention that the teacher would say more about the painting than just reading the slide. But for the students who need visual support, I want there to be the basic information in writing. I'm next going to talk about the gallery walk. To prepare for this activity, first I post pictures of paintings around the room, having prepared um, by printing one copy of each in color. Then I write describing words onto stickies. You can color code the stickies for each team. I like to put each team's set on its own sheet of computer paper, spread out so that they can all be seen at the same time. The students take the stickies and put them on the pictures that they decide correspond, discussing as a team. Next, I have the students read the stickies of others and put checks on the four total around the room that they agree with. To differentiate, ask the more proficient students to write four comments direct to, directly onto the stickies of different classmates. Things like, I agree, or that's right. Talk about the different works of art with everyone to, to debrief. Next, I will talk about the marker game. As you may know, the marker game is a true or false game played in pairs. Students compete against each other one-on-one -on -one with a marker between them on the table. The teacher reads the statement. If the statement is true, the students grab the marker. The first student to grab it earns a point. If the statement is false, they do not touch the marker. If a student touches the marker for a false statement, his opponent gets a point. And students keep track of their own scores. In the materials that I will share with you at the end in the resources folder, there are copies of all of the activities I'm presenting. I have uploaded a copy of each in French and Spanish and in English so that you can rewrite it into the language you teach. A copy of the marker game that I have included has four rounds using four paintings. Allow me to read you one of the rounds. This painting is a landscape, and then the students would have to decide if it was true or false. Let's continue. In the painting, there are three little girls. This is a self-portrait of Jean-Michel Basquet, an artist from New York. The self-portrait is realistic. The colors of the painting are white, 
black, brown, red, and blue. Once you've played the marker game, you can have your students write their own true-false statements in pairs. As it is a good idea to have students do presentational writing over the course of the unit to practice their skills. To start, divide students into groups. Have each assigned to one of the paintings hanging in the room. Have them make five true or false statements about their painting. Then the teacher shows the painting at the front of the room and the students in their groups take turns reading their true false statements about the painting. In their journals, the other students write whether the statement is true or false. This brings us to the activity called See, Think, Wonder, a popular thinking routine that I first learned from Harvard's Project Zero. It is likely that you have used this graphic organizer before, but I want to help you improve upon your practice by telling you how I use it in this, at this particular point in the unit. As you see this visual, the handout has three columns. The first is to write down what the student sees. Our students are best able to describe concrete objects, and so this first step is to build confidence. And they have also heard me say what I see in works of art. This activity isn't just good because it is accessible. To start commenting on art by seeing what you see is an established practice in art education. I had the opportunity at the, Mu at the Boston Museum of Fine Arts to attend an introductory workshop to the technique of visual thinking strategy, where I was taught to start with asking students what they see in a work of art. It's a start to commenting on art and the process warms up the students' observation skills and gets them thinking. What one person sees may be different than what the next person sees, so there are no wrong answers. What you see is personal. The teacher accepts all answers without evaluating them. In visual thinking strategy, the teacher repeats back what the student says they have seen by saying, so you see, and pointing at it in the painting. The second column in See, Think, Wonder is, of course, the I Think column. This is where students begin to interpret the work of art. They use what they observed to then make a commentary supported by the evidence of what they saw. The teacher can ask the question as they circulate around the room, what did you see that made you think that? The question is open to all answers and what students uh, and what the students personally interpret. According to visual thinking strategy, the teacher doesn't evaluate the student's interpretation. The teacher only asks what the student has seen that made them make that interpretation. In this safe environment, the student builds their skill of talking about art. And the third column is the wonder column. I ask my students to put their thoughts into questions in this column. Teachers are always asking students to ask questions, not because those questions are going to get answered, but because the questions further thinking. In the words from Project Zero's website, by encouraging students to wonder and ask questions, the routine stimulates curiosity and helps students reach for new connections. If you want your students to deepen their thinking, you can extend to this activity by doing a think pair share, which is also a tool from Project Zero. The first step is to fill out notes in the graphic organizer, See, Think, Wonder, on their own, the think stage. Then ask students to get into pairs and share their notes with a partner, allowing their partner to borrow ideas and add to their own graphic organizer as they listen. The teacher then reconvenes the class and asks the students to report back on their conversations. Students can be asked to share one insightful thought from their partner or their own thoughts. The students are invited to hold on to their notes for writing assignment at the end of the unit. When I do this unit, I do a see, think, wonder on one day and then repeat it with a different painting on another day. I like it because the students will then have a choice of which work of art to write about for their final assessment. I intentionally have the activity on two different days so that if the students are absent one day, they will still have notes for the final assessment. And finally, I like doing the activity twice so the students can be more prepared for the second time and push themselves just a little bit further. Stand up for your choice. At this point, the students have heard a lot of language about art through the teacher talk and then through the interpretive activity of the marker game. They also read the words on the stickies and decided which work of art matched. In addition, the students did pre um, presentational writing in their graphic organizer. 
called See, Think, Wonder. So now it is important to offer the next activity as an interpersonal activity. I mentioned this so that the teacher is aware of supporting spontaneous communication while doing this activity. It's intentional on my part to use mostly the same paintings that the class has already seen together so the students can reuse vocabulary that they have already heard when talking about these works of art. I learned this activity at MAFLA 2018 with Emily Scheinberg from Boston's Museum of Fine Arts in her session on Teaching with Art in the World Languages Classroom, though I've changed the name of the activity. I call it Stand Up for Your Choice, and in this activity, students have four pictures in front of them and four characteristics of art. Each student can only pair one word with one picture, and they have to use all the words and all the pictures. This is going to mean that, just like in the game Apples to Apples, if you know that game, they are going, there are going to be some pairings that are less than perfect. The communicative part of this activity is when they justify their pairings to the group and collaborate to decide on one answer that they can then present to the class. To set up, make one copy and color of the sheet with four paintings for each group and a set of terms for each student. Each round will use four terms, the same terms for every student. Go over the art terms for that round as a whole class. Get students into groups. Give students time to decide individually which art term they will pair with which picture. Have the students share and then give time for each student to justify why they match that term with that painting. The group needs to agree together on one answer by negotiating the choices in the target language. Each group will present their final answers to the rest of the class. Presentational writing assessment. For the final assessment, the students will have to fill out, will have to pull out their notes from the two attempts of See, Think, Wonder. The teacher projects the two works of art on the board and the students choose one work to write about. Here is the assignment. Choose one of the two works of art and write a review about it. Include what is depicted in the work, your interpretation of the work, which characteristics of art were used in the composition, lines, hues, shapes, shadows, etc., and what questions you have when looking at that work of art. Before I conclude, I want to say a word about working social justice into an art unit. I've had a pretty easy time of working on representation when teaching art. You can lead students to think critically for themselves when talking about who is represented in the works that, they are, that, that are considered fine art. When social justice is woven through the unit, you don't want this to be just one activity, but an outlook as you present the unit. To that end, I've put together some images to get your students talking. They are in the resources folder, and I'm going to go over a few of them here. You can get the conversation started by showing this chart and asking students to converse with a partner about what they see and don't see in the works of art up around the room. That is a good starting place. Students who've been working on visual literacy will have a good start for making sense of this image. Whether or not your students do, ask them who they see here, what they're holding, and what emotion they are feeling and why. Then in the target language, you would explain to them who the Gorilla Girls are. You might need to look them up first, but you can do that ahead of class. And show them a few pieces of their public service announcements. I have a couple examples in the next slides and more in the resources folder. I wrote this slide into French and Spanish. And this one as well. I think you get the idea of how to start a conversation with students on representation. Please see the full resource in the folder. The best work you can do is to lead your students to a conversation where they comment on representation themselves. No one wants a moral lecture from the teacher, um, but students can be led to do their own thinking. So now I'm at the conclusion of this presentation. I have shared many ideas here. Think about what you can make your own. Consider adding your next step in the comments to start a conversation with other teachers. In the resources folder, I have all the links you need to help you get started. The shortened URL for this folder is bit.ly backslash talk with art. Thanks for watching today. 
I hope this has been helpful. I will be sharing about how to use picture books in my next video. I hope to see you then.